Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we have a scenario by one of my naval architects, a Patreon supporter that also gets to send in a scenario every month that almost certainly gets picked for a video. It is once again Darth Vendar who's created this scenario, Otto von Habsburg and the Carlist King. In late 1936, when the Spanish Civil War sparked to life, Austria-Hungary paid the events no interest, as it was a war between communists and fascists. With no interest to choose a side, the Empire instead licked its wounds from the victory of restoring the Kaiserreich and the humiliation of losing the pride of the fleet. With a debate raging in the naval academies between sleek, efficient designs like those battleships, uh, like those of the German ship, uh, the German battleship Bismarck currently being built, or the old guard approach of a monumental vessel with the armament of heavy cruisers strapped to the side. However, that is a question for another time. Now, in 1937, a new plan of action is taking form. Germany has promised that they have found a way to deal with the fascist Italian threat, while our agents have been contact contacted for a unique proposal. The Carlists, a Spanish monarchist faction in the Nationalist Army, has reached out to us asking for support as they plan to make the civil war even more chaotic. We must destroy the Spanish nationalist fleet on the northern Iberian coast to make the way for the landing of the Austro-Hungarian and German tanks, planes and volunteers to help spearhead the front. However, with the destruction of the pride of the fleet and the whole of a suitable replacement not even decided on, let alone laid down, we instead will be sending three refit pocket battleships of the same design as the one that successfully proved itself in the Battle of the Bosporus. With the Escalator Clause enacted to the Second London Naval Treaty, we will have near free reign to refit our heavy cruisers as we see fit. I get three heavy cruisers with a starting range of 25,000 meters, and I'm taking on a couple of Spanish ships. Two heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, and two destroyers. So I'm going to have to have a couple of cruisers which can handle all of that. So I can design heavy cruisers as I see fit. This is going to be fun. Well, I can design these mostly as I see fit, because there are some limitations. Um, let's see, I have to have a displacement max of 7,000, sorry, 7,000, no, 17,700. I have to have uh, maximum bulkheads. I can have a speed as much as I like, but range should be set to at least medium. And uh, recommended super funnel over the uber funnel. Uh, cost maximum 40 million. Well, I think I can make that work. How about going with a diesel 2 engine this time around, just to shake things up a little bit. An oil and um, just to piss off all the people who still know <laughs> and get annoyed. That diesel doesn't use boilers. I'm sorry, but I have to have one. It's not like the game says, oh, you're using diesel, then we're not using a boiler. Crip 4 armor. Um, let's go for heavy barbette thickness. A bit of torpedo protection and double hull bottom. Anti flood. Hmm. There are a couple of destroyers and light cruisers around, and I have seen the AI use a lot of torpedoes in their builds. Anti flood 3. Reinforced bulkheads 1. Otherwise, my hull weight might go up too quickly. And citadel. Let's go with an armored citadel. Nothing terribly heavy. Modern Tower 1, that's all I have access to. There are no other towers. And as for the Secondary Tower, Modern Secondary Tower 2 or 1, um, it's generally just recommended to take the better one. Unless you are very much restricted by budget or by displacement. But in my case, neither of those is true, so I can just go with um, the Secondary Tower as I see fit. There we go. As for armament, there is no restriction on armament. And this means that I get access to a maximum of 11 inch triples. These will fire every 34 seconds and that's without being buffed. And they will do a substantial amount of damage. But I'm not just targeting heavy cruisers and light cruisers. I'm also targeting destroyers. So I'll probably have to augment that amount of firepower with a couple of... Um, Five, six inch guns. Yeah, fives for secondaries. Ideally, I would not have too many different main guns, too many different calibers. 
because then I would have, for example, a 6 inch and an 11 inch and they would both target the same ship, which is just not really a great use of my time. He recommended the Uber funnel. Um, let's start with the turrets, the main armament. I think 11 inch are nice, but they are maybe too much for what I'm trying to do with this ship. Let's go for 9 inch guns. Also, these are Mark 5s. Oh, they're all Mark 5s. Never mind. Now then, the next question. Triples or duels? Could I fit a bunch of triples and still have enough left over to uh, flash out the ship, if you will? Ah, crap. It's too, too small, this design. You know, I might not be able to fit this. No, the main tower doesn't want to go forward anymore. So that means that I'm going to have to put... Ooh. Is that secondary tower, the, the, the tower one smaller? Yeah, quite a bit. I'm going to sacrifice a bit of accuracy in favor of getting another turret placed down. This way I'll have 12 barrels and a bit easier weight offset then just going with um, six barrels, or sorry, nine barrels instead of 12. Reload, 28 seconds. Let's buff that. Reload, 16.9 seconds, so let's say 17. Radar, yes please. Weight offset, 1%. Shells. Against the threat that I'm up against. Heavy cruisers, light cruisers and destroyers. Lid I-2 is not a bad idea, but the ship's not that well protected against flash fires. With two powder, you have a lot less chance of flash fire. Okay, and then the secondary guns. There are destroyers about, and they need to be gotten rid of. Uh, that is not very much where I want them. There. Ah, oh, this field of fire is terrible. And this hull is taking up so much space that I can probably only, only fit these 5 inches here. 5 inch dual seems to be a bit more forgiving. But it does mean that I won't share the firepower or the stowage of ammunition between these two 5 inch guns. So make sure I get both of them at the same amount of barrels. And then we can put the 4 inch not there. Oh wow. I was really hoping that I could put them on here. It's not an option. If I do it like this, however, I can place down another 5-inch gun. Looks like those turrets almost fall off the ship, though. Can I make that look a little better? Just have some sort of folded inwards? Hmm. Not here. I guess they're just going to have to sit where they are. I hope that these will still spin. There, I can put 3-inch guns on those elevated positions. And then a couple of 2-inchers. Let's go for 2-inch dual barrels. Few positions on the superstructure only. Not as many as I would have hoped. Okay, um, a thousand tons left for displacement and a thousand tons left to either upgrade the ship more or put on more armor. Let's go with a slight aft weight offset. Wow, it's either a 0.9 or a 0.1? Okay. 0 0.8. No, that won't fit. An aft weight of set of 0.8, as somebody mentioned in the comment section, might not be bad. Because then your bow is lifted slightly out of the water. Because the ship is slightly stern heavy. And by doing that, you might be able to achieve higher speeds. Um, I only have a 1% flash fire chance. Okay. Now where can I see the stats of having an offset? Longitudinal weight offset. Minus 0.5% speed at maximum turn, minus 3% deceleration. 
The rest of these things are so small that I don't really care about them too much. Okay. In that case, let's go back to point one. So you're going to go there and you're going to go back out. Pretty much nothing. Ah, oh, crap. Didn't mean to grab that. Um, a rangefinder might not be a bad idea. Let's go in this case, because I'm going to acquire several different targets, preferably fast, for a coincidence rangefinder, and give the ships more ammunition. It doesn't really increase the weight that much, but it increases the amount of ammo from 390 per gun to 526 per gun. So that I can keep these things firing the entire time. Since there are destroyer threats, I'll also have a sonar station. That just gives me 500 tons to play around with. Engagement range 17.6. Engagement range 10.8. Let's invest a bit more in the belt armor. Because I'll probably be looking at taking belt hits. Let's say they have 9-inch um, guns like myself. They will be capable of penning belt armor of 13.3 inch at 10,000 meters. I have 108% armor quality because I didn't go for the Super Citadel. So that means that I'll have to have quite a bit more armor on this ship. It's going to be uh, not so easy to do. 7 inch means I have about 14 inches of effective armor, which means that at 10,000 meter range they still can't pen me. If they use a 9 inch gun. If they use an 11 inch gun, the whole thing is off. And I would need 20 inches of armor. So if they have that, I'll have to angle more. And artificially inflate my armor like that. Ship's not going to have any kind of torpedoes. I don't need those. Let's throw some armor on the conning tower. A bit more on the turrets. A bunch more on the secondaries. Turret top a bit more. Let's go for 3 inch turret top armor. 3 inches of deck armor. 2 inches of deck extended. And that's about it. 7.3 inches on the conning tower. Pretty well rounded armor scheme I'd say. The ship is called the Sibinico. Speed 30.5 knots. Didn't change that at all. Range medium. Bulkheads maximum, 12 9-inch barrels, supported by 6 5-inch barrels, and a whole bunch of 3-inch and 2-inch. Let's see if I can get rid of the Spanish fleet. How is their design looking? We already have eyes on them. I don't think I have too much to fear from that ship in the sense of sheer firepower. Because those look like 6 or 7 inch guns. Just a lot of them. But not any large caliber guns. So I can probably pretty safely approach to about 10,000 meters. Current starting range was about 35 and effectively 27. Okay, let's team towards the fleet. Would it be beneficial if I go line abreast, ship side by side? Probably not. I think a standard battle line is more effective, as I would be at around 10,000 meter range and then uh, open up. So I can have all 12 barrels per ship firing at the enemy. Okay, what are your light cruisers like? Lots of turrets. Again, relatively small caliber and a quintuple launcher. So five torpedo tubes. The others also had some torpedoes. Uh, a triple. That's it. The rest is just secondaries. Range, 19. They're coming my way, but they are angled. Let's start turning to port. Allow my ships to, the time that they need to start bringing their guns over to starboard. And let these guys just get closer. I have 2106 shells per ship. So I should have plenty of ammunition to throw their way, even if I don't immediately pen them. Neither party has a tech difference. 
So I am uh, effectively outnumbered and presumably outgunned, at least in the sense of the number of guns that they have. But it looks like the damage has already been done. Nine inch strikes through the bow deck of this ship and deals a bit of damage. Let's see how quickly she can put that out. Because that tells me a bit about their bulkhead situation. Not oh, pretty quick. Pretty quick. I wonder when they're going to fire back at me. Now since they effectively have more ships, I need to whittle them down one by one, as opposed to rushing headlong into that fleet and subjecting my heavy cruisers to all of that firepower. That would be a really bad way to fight this fight. 14 kilometer range, identification 62. Are we penning belt armor or deck armor? If we're penning at all, because currently we're just throwing shit out there, but we're not hitting much. No, nope, that's just ricocheted. Switch to high explosive, because I think everything's just angling off or ricocheting off the ship currently. High explosive wouldn't do that. It wouldn't cause terrible amounts of damage, but it would just not bounce off. Ah, she's firing back now. Okay. In one of my previous videos, I was saying that I don't know what the guns are capable of. I haven't identified the ship yet. But as you guys have pointed out in the comment section, you can already see what the ship has. It says it right here. It has five dual 6-inch guns. One dual 4-inch, six dual 5s, 14 dual 2s, and four triple 2s. So you don't even need an identification on the ship to see what it has. I'd never noticed that, but that is a really neat way. I think that, however, should go. All of this stuff... I should not be able to see what that thing can do before it's been completely identified. Because I can already see if this ship can pen me or not. Officially, it hasn't been identified. This is something that I think the dev should take away, because it makes it too good. Now, I am in effective firing range of those uh, six inches. So I need to get a bit of distance. Secondary tower, penetration, 37 damage. Identification, 83, 84. I'm interested in its armor scheme. That's something that this shoot info does not tell me yet. Because the armor scheme will tell me a lot about whether I can pen it or not. Just shattering on its armor belt. Probably means that the armor belt has more armor than the secondary tower. Come on, there. La La Catalunya. Armor belt, conning tower 8 inch, 4 inch deck, 4 inch belt. Chance to pen, 25%. Your chance to pen me with those 6 inch pom poms, 6%. Okay, in that case, we're just going to slug it out a while. Um, do I continue to fling HE at them? If I turn the entire division around, I might have a better chance of getting a flat side of the Catalunya and her sister ship, Magdalena. I have been hit. The Innsbruck has been hit. But that barely causes any damage. So that's good news for my heavy cruisers. Quite a traditional design, this ship. ABXY turret. So that means that in the next video I'll do, I'll probably make something weird again. I'm trying to balance it out between having a, let's say, a halfway decent design. And something that's just ridiculous. Chance to pen, still 25%. 26-ish. Yep, there we go, 26. This thing's barely taking any damage. I need to do better. 
What about switching to AP? Because I might just need a few good hits to deal some serious damage to that ship. It does, however, have maximum bulkheads. So flooding this thing out is not that likely. And it looks like I am... Yeah, I'm still taking fire. It seems like the Innsbruck is the receiving end. Okay. Have the DDs been... Oh, the light cruisers have been identified. They're also firing at me now. You know what? I might take out the light cruisers first. They're easier to kill. My chance to pen is 100%. They also come with 6-inch guns, so it's not like these are much more of a threat than these things. But they have quintuple torpedo launchers. Range of 10-1. Okay. New target, new opportunity, and hopefully quickly sinking a few guys. Immediately one hit. Guadalquivir. Many bulkheads. I can just tough it out against the heavy uh, salvos, or the, well, the, the numerous salvos of 6-inch ammunition. They don't do that much. Whereas I am definitely wearing down this light cruiser. I will have to keep an eye on the torpedo launch. I am currently outside of range, and I would really want to keep out of the torpedo range. These things are fast torps. Not sneaky. I am, with some trepidation, looking at my amount of ammunition. Because I'm only seeing a little bit of damage for the 600, 500 shells that they have already fired. That does not bode well. Save ammunition. Only hit when you think you can. Ah, destroyer. 9.5 kilometer range, fast torps. 19 inch, these are probably bigger, 22 inch. Oh, the 5 inch have opened up. Wait, the 5 inch are doing damage against the destroyer? Are you guys... <laughs> are you guys even targeting the destroyer? No, the destroyer just happens to be subjected to fire. Because the Fletcher here is too close to the Guadalquivir. And just happens to catch a couple of stray shells. That other DD, no torps launched, no torps launched. With the rate of fire of these things, oh shit, they did launch. Oh crap. How did I not see those? Who sent those? Not Fletcher. The heavy cruiser. Magdalena. That was the cruiser that threw the torpedoes at my heavy cruisers. That's the culprit. Alright, the plan is to start with approaching this whole formation from the other angle. I want to push in against the Berenguela. By doing that, I can slowly weather them down. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to give my 5-inch guns ample opportunity to do some damage. And they seem to be taking me up on that. Because these 5-inch guns, oh shit, are not disappointing. Uh, We're already turning. Might as well make it a full port turn. And hope that Innsbruck can survive. Who threw that? Seriously, whose torp is that? Is that one of the, the long-range strays from the heavy cruiser? Crap, there's another one. Here, I can barely keep an eye on it. Sebenico should be fine. Yeah, there it is. She should be fine. does go to show that I need to keep my eye on the ball. I need to not get hit by a torpedo, because that's not something that these ships do very well. Anti-Torp 2, Anti-Flood 3. So a torpedo is going to hit hard. Chance to hit. 
I had 10 kilometer range, 4.3. Fire. This target, Berenguela. Oh, we immediately caused more flooding on the Guadalquivir. Come on. Oh, you're smoking. Great. It's not what I was hoping for. I was hoping to quickly put the Berenguela down. I know I'm in torpedo range, so I'm keeping a very close eye on what this ship is doing. And that goes for all of these. The destroyers are also in range. Range 10, 8 on the 5-inch guns. Maybe I can take down... Oh, they all smoke up together. Lovely. You know what? These heavy cruisers... They're throwing out so much ammunition... That they might run out. They have a standard complement... No, a reduced complement of shells. Okay. Berenguela taking some damage. Fire aboard the... Tambra. Minimum... Hold up, somebody torped. Yeah, there it is. I think the Innsbruck is at risk. Let's make sure she's not. So Innsbruck, turn away. Uh, Sabinico, keep going. Leonding to port. Probably a destroyer. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the destroyers did that. Nasty piece of work. Both Berengela and Guadalquivir taking some damage. Pretty good. I do want to keep my fleet pretty close together. Because I'm not feeling confident about my ability to keep an eye on everything. And not get hit by torpedoes. If I have them too far split up. Shells, 1295. This is not going according to plan. Weapons off. Secondaries allowed. How do I want to approach this? Catalonia has ceased fire because she's running out of ammo. I mean, she still has 450 left. But the AI considers that to be a low complement of ammunition. Ceased fire. What about the cruisers? Oh, they still have a lot more left. Conda de Regla, Berenguela, Guadalquivir, and Valiente. Hold up. Shit. There are so many torpedo-capable platforms here that it's hard to keep an eye on all of them. Because every ship that I'm fighting has the capability to throw torpedoes out. And it's not like they're running out of torpedoes anytime soon either. Well, the heavy cruiser might. But the rest of them definitely are not. Okay, you guys are done smoking. Increase back. Get back up to full speed. I must have swapped that when I attached these guys or detached them from the division. There we go. Guadalquivir taking serious flooding. Torpedoes launched, but that was when I was stationary. That's one light cruiser down. Next, Berenguela. Focus fire. Torpedoes are approaching the Innsbruck. Uh oh. Don't be stupid now. Keep steady. Keep steady. Keep steady. Keep steady. Don't overturn. Berenguela flooding. These guys have many bulkheads, so they can take a few hits and not immediately flood out. Berenguela hasn't launched her torpedoes. Neither have the other lights. Okay. I've already expended half of my ammunition. On the Leon Ding. Innsbruck and Sabenico are doing a little better. Oh, she's smoking again. Come on now. Now, it might look like this is a 
pretty much a turkey shoot, but keep in mind that I have no bearing on what sort of ships the AI generates. For all I know, they could have gone for heavy cruisers with uh, not 8-inch guns, but something far, far bigger. Guns in the caliber of 11-inch, for example, would have been a very different fight. But I get what I play against. Torpedoes incoming from Berenguela. I'm going to have to once again split the division. Sabinico turned to port because I saw that this guy also decided to torpedo me. Catalonia. Uh, hard to starboard. Hmm. Can we put this one down? Because that would eliminate another torpedo threat. And then I can probably close in against the uh, Catalunya at 6.8. Improve my chance to pen. Oh, not by much. We're still only looking at 30%. Lovely. Destroyers? 20 torpedoes. 15 on the Tombre. It's not great. It's not. Oh shit, you got hit by a torpedo, didn't you? Yeah, I missed that. Too busy looking at how I'm going to deal with the heavy cruisers here. Uh, Innsbruck. Steady as she goes. No more torpedoes traveling here. Salvo here. By that time, I expect the Sabinico to be somewhere else entirely. Leonding is hit. Damage to the structural integrity cannot be retrieved. But at least my rudder should be able to be repaired. And I can... Oh, shit! Oh, fuck me. That's a thousand damage. This is one of those catch-22s. If you push in too close, you're going to get torped. If you don't push in, you don't have to pen. Sebenico is going to take a lot of flooding. Leonding was able to pump out the water, fortunately. I hope that Sebenico can, can recover from this, because this is serious damage. I might lose the Sebenico here. Which is a terrible loss, because she was carrying a lot of ammunition still. Flooding on Catalonia, but the damage is just not there. Structural integrity barely gives a shit. There's another salvo. The Sabinico is still afloat. She's contained the flooding. But I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. The Innsbruck is by far the healthiest ship. Catalonia is ready to torpedo again. Lovely. Sabinico, come on. Activate the pumps. Get rid of it. Start hosing. Flooding, there we go, 83% structural integrity, 82, 1200 shells left. So Benico is not countering the flooding. She, Catalonia, did torpedo me just now. Where are they? I'm very much assuming that she targeted the Innsbruck because that would be the most likely target. She has two compartments flooding. Fortunately, she's not using those six inches, even though they still have ammo. Getting rid of these heavy cruisers is going to be a real challenge. Oh dear. Oh, she's fine. For now. More flooding. Emulation, 837. Oh, this means I'm going to have to use a lot of secondaries against those light cruisers and the destroyers. Do you think you can finish that one off? Oh, no, 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 no. Sabinico got hit again. That's going to kill her. That flooding will finish her off. Yeah. Utter misplay. 
At least this light, sorry, this heavy cruiser is not that much of a threat. Catalonia. Magdalena still has plenty of torps, but is hesitant to use them. Range is only four, and now we have a 50% chance to pen. Structural integrity is going down on the Catalonia pretty quickly. She's flooding again. But what I'm very concerned about is the torpedo capability of the Magdalena. 3.8 kilometer range. Fortunately, there's a not fast... There she goes. There she goes. Catalonia is getting hammered. She's probably going to fall in behind the Magdalena at this point. And by doing that, she'll still open herself up to quite a bit broadside. Yep, there we go. Now we can do damage. 669 left. Innsbruck 900. Finish her off before she heals up. Anti-flood. Three. There's another torp out of the mist. There. Oh, shit. Shit. No, either push right by it or get hit. There we go. I probably cannot pen the Magdalena at this angle. Leonding is running away. Thank God that the AI still hasn't recognized that they just need to push me with all the ships at once. Catalunya refuses to sink. Alright, switch fire to Magdalena. Hold on, she's torped again, isn't she? Not 100%, but I'm pretty suspicious here. Maybe I should have put torps on my own cruisers. Magdalena flooding? Barely. Putting some serious hurt on her now. Structural integrity is dropping. Buoyancy is not. She is perfectly healthy. 94, 94. Now she's dropping. If I stay at a forward torpedo arc, she might not be able to use her... Oh, no, she will be able to use her torpedo tubes. Okay, can't have that. Just gotta sink her before she torps me. Just. 459 rounds of 9-inch nine, um, nine ammunition left. Innsbruck 657. Come on. She might have both sides ready. Of the torpedo launchers. Yep, she just sent out one salvo. Which side? I'm going to tell both the heavy cruisers to make a hard turn. To just throw off the torpedoes. Come on, guys. This ship has an impressive ability to sustain hits. That's a lot of damage that that heavy cruiser has taken. There, she just threw out the rest of her torps as well. Lovely. Now, I'm considering the heavy cruisers to be the hardest nuts to crack. So if I, at some point, end up emptying all the 9-inch ammunition into these ships, uh, it's not favorable, but so be it. There's the salvo. It's not favorable, but so be it. Um, I can probably handle the other ships with the secondaries. Yeah, now you're shit out of luck. What the hell? Is that the Valiente? Yes, that's definitely the Valiente doing that. Structural integrity, 14%. Look at the damage on that boat. 13% structural integrity and buoyancy is dropping. 5%, 3, 2... Holding at 2. 0.7. Gone. Next up, Catalonia. She also has no torpedoes remaining. Which could very well mean that she just went with all torpedoes that she still had left against the heavy cruisers. So let's again 
use the firepower of the heavies, of the, the main firepower, to go for the Catalunya, and the secondaries to go for the, Caliente, the, the Valiente. And by now, it's pretty much one ship. I'm not sure if they're trying to transfer some crew, but this is not a good way to maneuver. Torpedoes out from starboard launcher Valiente. I caught that right as they went into the water, so I can maneuver the Innsbruck out of harm's way. Catalonia almost done. 249 shells. Oof. 3.8 thousand damage in the Innsbruck. 2.7 on the Leonding. There's the torpedo salvo. I think that the Conda de Reglia is not... Or sorry, Regla is not... She's not going to torp. Yet. Putting her the hurt on the heavy cruiser now. And on the light cruisers. Valiente is the main target of the, light, of the secondary guns. But she's sharing <laughs> pretty much the exact same space with the Conda de Regla. There we go. That's the second heavy down. Fire against the Fletcher. Main guns, Valiente. Now we can have the secondaries do some work. That destroyer is quickly getting reduced to scrap. Buoyancy is not great on these things with minimum bulkheads. Yeah, she's done. And now we can go to town. As long as the Conde de Regla does not torp, that is. Valiente is no longer carrying any torpedoes. I'm not sure if that was already the case. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to do a bit of turning. Because I trust no light cruiser like that. Yep. That's a greeting card from the Tambre. I have no idea how to pronounce that in Spanish. Innsbruck, once again, dancing around the torps. Regla. I'm not sure if she went with both sides. She has a port starboard quintuple, right? Yeah. Let's assume she went with both sides. Because then I can only... Um, get lucky instead of find out that you know what she went with one no she went with both you lose a heavy cruiser bad way to go no ammo oh shit leonding's out of nine inch fortunately there's just three ships left of the spanish fleet i'm not sure how effective my 5-inch guns are going to be. It does look like they're doing a decent amount of damage. 13, 18, 20. Innsbruck is also running down her ammunition pretty quick. Down to 78. I am very glad that I went with the increased complement of ammunition. Tombra is still reloading. Now I can just mop up. Outgunned, outnumbered, but the Austro-Hungarian fleet pulls through. We did lose a heavy cruiser, but losing one ship against their eight ships, I'd say that's a fair trade-off. Oh, and I am going to need a bit more ammunition. So let's make sure that by the time we get back to port, there will be more ammo. Because these ships would not be ready for an, a second engagement. Now let's see if we can take down the Berenguela. Be no, not before she drops torps because she just did it. You little cruiser. Now she's going to smoke up. What she should have done was run away. She decided not to. And she is now going to bear the fruits of that. Berenguela, flooding, but fighting it. Not fast enough. Both engines are down. I'm still trying to open this window, but it really doesn't want to. There she goes. 
Job done, and the victory goes to the Austro-Hungarian Navy. That was quite the fight, and a quite a decent design for a heavy cruiser. Now again, if I had taken up ships uh, of a different class, for example, if I hit play again, uh, I just wonder what the AI would generate n this time around. Not that I'm going to do the whole fight again, but it could have had a severely different outcome. See, this is different. These guys have three triple eight inch guns, which would have been a far, far larger threat against my heavy cruisers. Their light cruisers have two double five inch guns. Jesus. It's like they put the guns on the cruiser and tore everything off of the light cruisers. These things barely have anything. Two double five inch and one single two inch. So you can pretty safely ignore that. And these... I can tell you about the guns, but I don't know about the torpedoes. Anyway, I'm going to stick to my victory, thank you very much, and not take on these 8-inch gun cruisers. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if your thoughts are on the design, and I shall catch you tomorrow for the next Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts video. See you then.